calendar for the day. The first bill on the calendar for the day is House File 15. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House file number 15, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to public safety, the first engrossment. I recognize the author, Representative Stevenson, who will explain the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And members, and for people who are watching on television or online, I want to tell you that this bill deals with a very difficult subject and that my comments will be very direct. Members, under existing Minnesota law, if a man drugs his wife and then rapes her while she is unconscious, he cannot be prosecuted for rape. We like to think of so-called marital rape exceptions as an artifact of history, as a relic of a time when a woman was considered the property of her husband. But the sad truth is we still have a limited marital rape exception on the books today here in Minnesota. And members, don't be fooled into thinking that this is an academic discussion or some antiquated piece of law that no one pays attention to any longer. This happens. This happens every single year. In fact, the Sentencing Guidelines Commission estimates that repeal of this statute will result in seven additional convictions every year. That is seven people who are not getting the justice they are due because of this law. I also want to point out a Minnesota Court of Appeals decision, State v. Goswich, which was decided on December 31st of 2018. And in that case, a man had sex on multiple occasions with a woman who, and I'm quoting from the decision, according to the psychological assessments, functions at the mental capacity of a seven to eight-year-old child. He was charged by the Brown County attorney, but six weeks before the trial, the defendant married the victim. The trial court dismissed the case, pointing to this statute. Now, fortunately, the Court of Appeals reversed, citing in part the possibility that interpreting the voluntary relationship defense as applying to marriages occurring after the fact would, quote, permit or even encourage an actor to marry in order to avoid culpability for criminal contact, conduct, re-victimizing the victim. Members, the Court of Appeals was right to think about the perverse incentives that this law creates. We should all consider those incentives as well. As an aside, that decision was two to one. One judge would have upheld the dismissal. We were one vote away from that case being dismissed. But you don't have to take the word of the Minnesota Sentencing Guidelines Commission or play what if with State v. Goswich. I want to take a moment and tell you the story of Jenny Thiessen who lived this nightmare herself. Members, many of you had the chance to hear Jenny tell her story during the committee hearings on this bill. But for those who didn't, it's a story of how Minnesota law is failing. Just about two years ago, Jenny discovered that her husband was being investigated for making video recordings of his coworkers while they were using the restroom at work. During the investigation, police seized her husband's laptop. There was a lot of media on the laptop and the investigators asked Jenny to review some of it. Can you imagine her horror when she found on that laptop a video of herself, unconscious, helpless, and being raped by her husband? To add to the absolute horror of the situation, as the video progressed, the camera angle changed, and Jenny saw that her four-year-old child was asleep on the bed next to her. The Anoka County attorney filed felony level criminal sexual conduct charges. But the same day, Jenny received a phone call from the county attorney's office letting her know that the case had been dismissed. Her husband's defense attorney had pointed out that the so-called voluntary relationship defense in Minnesota meant that because Jenny was married to her rapist, he couldn't be charged with felony criminal sexual conduct. He'd never be prosecuted for raping Jenny. He'd never have to register as a sexual predator. There would be no true accountability for her husband and no justice for Jenny. Eventually, her husband was charged with a lesser offense, invasion of privacy, a gross misdemeanor. Earlier this year, he served his sentence, 30 days in custody with work release. Members, this gross miscarriage of justice would leave most people feeling helpless but not Jenny Thiessen. 
In her own words, the day she learned that the county attorney would be dismissing charges against her husband because of the marital rape exception, she was devastated and scared, but she quickly pivoted to action. She told our committees, quote, that night I struggled with the news I received, watched some Harry Potter with my kids, and by the next morning I was ready to go to work to make sure that no one in a similar situation hears, I'm sorry, the charges have been dropped. Members, Jenny Thiessen is in the gallery today. She's here today as she has been at each and every stop along the way to make certain that no one else is denied justice as she was. I want to express my absolute and profound gratitude to her for her persistence, her courage, and her service to the people of Minnesota. Members, Jenny has done her part. It's time for us to do ours. With your yes vote today, you can help us send marital, Minnesota's marital rape exception where it belongs to the ash bin of history. Thank you. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House file number 15. Third reading. Discussion. Representative Johnson. Madam Speaker, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, moving this bill forward so quickly. As you know, you carried this bill last year, and I included in, in the omnibus bill that it was unfortunately Governor Dayton vetoed. It's time this bill moved. This is the same bill with one minor exception from last year. In the Judiciary Committee, I added an amendment, and that amendment was to change the enactment date from the end of July to, to enact it on the final day of, of passage. This is a good bill. It needed to be done long ago. Members, please vote green. The member from Hennepin, Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, uh, members, all Minnesotans deserve to be safe, especially with their families, partners, and spouses. Every Minnesotan deserves the opportunity to seek and receive justice when they are the victim of a crime. This session, we are working to combat sexual assault and gender-based violence in a number of initiatives. The murder, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Task Force, statute of limitations for rape, funding for prevention of sexual violence and, and uh, domestic assault, there is a lot of work that we need to do this session, and I hope that we can all come together as we will around this bill to support these important changes. Minnesota is one of just 13 states to continue to have a marital rape exemption. And uh, we know that victims of sexual assault are less likely to uh, report crimes to police, especially when they think nothing will be done. It's important that we take this step, and it is very important that we do so, I think, together today unanimously. I want to thank Representative Stevenson for his leadership, and I want to thank the Speaker for her past leadership on this very important bill. And members, I look forward to all of us together um, taking a step forward towards justice for all people of the state of Minnesota. The member from Anoka, the author of the bill, Representative Stevenson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, members, many of you will know that I'm a prosecutor for Hennepin County in my day job, and I can remember learning in law school the 17th century English common law principle that a husband could never be convicted of raping his wife because by consenting to marry, the wife hath given up herself to her husband. I'm sure that many of us, and hopefully all of us, feel that those words are repugnant. And it's time we reject them. It's time that our laws match our values. On behalf of Jenny Thiessen and on behalf of all of the people who are wrongly denied justice each and every year, I urge your green vote. Thank you. The clerk will take the roll. Clerk will close the roll. There being 130 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.